There we go. Hi, I'm Jane Velez Mitchell. Tired of that same old cooking show? Well, we've got something completely different for you. It's called New Day, New Chef. This is a cooking show unlike any you have ever seen before. Recipe. It made me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Recipes that are super healthy, too. Stop. See you there. Welcome to our global watch party and our fun after party. You're invited. And if you're here, you're in the party. And we've got some of the stars of New Day, New Chef. We've got the amazing Chef Babette, who kept getting picked for the main photo. Every time I would look about anything with New Day, New Chef, there was Chef Babette. And that's probably because she always looks ready to go on the red carpet at any moment. It doesn't matter. It could be four in the morning. She's ready to go on the red carpet. <laughs> then we've got the amazing Simone Reyes, country music star, of course, vegan country music star. She is absolutely extraordinary and recorded Go Vegan Go, which was an incredible production of Jane Unchained, along with New Day New Chef co-hosting. We've got Corinne Sutton, who is an amazing bodybuilder, ripped. Look at this people, vegan muscle. Come on, man. Don't talk to me about where do you get your protein. Now, Ryan Nelson, the first time I met him was I was in a panel and he walked in and I was terrified. I was like, this guy is ginormous. He's got muscles on his muscles on his muscles. He's so gentle and kind and loving that I just fell in love with him. Um, and they do an incredible, these two gentlemen do an incredible push-ups with shaking hands in the middle of it. It was, it was out of control while, while our pan, while our taste testers are chowing down on the food. And then we've got the one and only Jane Elizabeth, who um, really just adds so much to everything she does. She's an amazing activist, really, really bringing, I would say, grace, charm, and ladylike behavior to this movement, which is sorely needed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I had a nickel for everyone who told me, just lower your voice, ma'am, the, the patrons at the other table are complaining, I would be a billionaire right now. So these are just some of the folks, the amazing vegans involved in New Day, New Chef, which I was absolutely honored to produce as part of our nonprofit news network, the Jane Unchained News Network, in coordination and collaboration with... Um, the amazing Eamon McChrystal of Inspired Entertainment. He's a multi Emmy winning producer. And this is really one of the, I hate to say the, because then, you know, somebody in another part of the world will go, hey, we did this, uh, blah, blah, blah. But I have not seen it. A, a, a sound stage cooking show with this kind of staff. I want to give a shout out to all the volunteers at Jane Unchained. Literally well over, almost 200 people volunteered to make this happen. So, let me start by asking the one and only Chef Babette, what did you make and how did it feel to be on New Day New Chef? Oh, it was so awesome. And you know, I made my, my little uh, holiday pizza and what's my vegan pizza and you let me be as messy as I wanted to be. It was so fun. <laughs> yeah, and you of course run a great restaurant here in Inglewood, California, Stuff right. I Eat. Yes. And I'll never forget the first time I met you, you jumped down on the ground and you did a five minute plank. And <laughs> I, I passed out just watching you. I was like, I'm fainting. I can't, I can't even imagine. And you don't hide your age. This is the miracle of a vegan diet. Will you reveal your age right here? Drum roll, please. Well, you know what, when you're, when you're vegan and you look like we look, you, you can't wait to tell people your age. I'm 70. Woo, woo. Woo! <laughs> and scooch up just a little closer so we can hear your beautiful tones. Okay. Um, Simone Reyes, yes, That's you better. are. And then just right in the center. Thank you. Yeah. And you, you can, you can handle the close up. You can yeah, handle okay. that close. Look at that close up people. <laughs> 70 going on 30. 
Yeah, 70. It's a good thing. And you attribute your vegan diet to that? Yeah, my lifestyle, definitely. I love myself. I take care of myself. And um, I, I, I prefer to uh, eat life rather than death. So it works. And the funny part on the show, I remember when I interviewed Chef Babette, because I go over to stuff I eat quite often, usually end up going live because I get overexcited about all the exciting food. And, and there's always like a cast of fabulous characters there. And I remember Chef Babette turned to me and said, if you don't eat a chicken, the chicken walks away. If you don't eat a carrot, the carrot rots. So when we're doing the show, I said, and Chef Babette, you told me if you don't eat a chicken, the chicken walks away. If you don't eat a carrot, the carrot rots. And you turn to me and you go, I never said that. I don't, you guys. I don't remember <laughs> saying that. Jane keeps saying I said that, but I, I, that ain't like something that just. I testify in a court of law because it really impacted me. I thought that's brilliant. Okay. Uh, let me go to Ryan Nelson. And, you know, uh, I don't want to be, I want to be politically correct. But again, the two gentlemen here are not only fabulous vegans, but they do have muscles on their muscles. And I'm not being. <laughs> I'm just saying people are always saying, Ryan, where do you get your protein? And you are, you and Corinne are living embodiments, Ooh. living embodiments. That's crazy. Talk to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, being on the show was just a real honor. Uh, and it was, it was cool that we were able to prepare a dish that we both feel like is something that really does break a lot of stereotypes in the sense of it is a high protein vegan meal. And it's one that both of I, both uh, Corinne and myself really enjoy. So uh, it was really fun and to be on, uh, to be on the show with all the amazing other guests. And uh, we did get to eat and try some of the other food that day. So that was, that was really awesome too. And Corinne, I knew the food was good because when we would take a break, the crew, which wasn't all <laughs> vegan, I think there may have been one vegan on the crew, they swarmed in to get that food. And if they didn't like it, they wouldn't be doing that. So Corinne, what was your experience like being on New Day, New Chef? Uh, it was amazing. Uh, I had a good time because I, I really enjoy sharing um, this knowledge when it comes to food. I feel that this is one of the things that a lot of people are worried about when they go more towards a uh, plant-based diet or trying to move more towards a vegan lifestyle is always the food. So uh, even after the show, it inspired me to, you know, make my own cookbook. And I just continued to cook more meals because I saw that a lot of people were asking for more macro friendly meals, things that's super healthy, things that they can use to actually increase their health and get a lot of nutrients out of their diet. So uh, that's that's when I went ahead and created my own cookbook. It's called Macro Mastery. And you can get it on my website, bodyhcfitness.com. And through that, like now a lot of people are able to enjoy uh, not just the tofu scramble, but other meals that I also made as well. So you were inspired by being on the show to create a cookbook. That is so fantastic. Tell us what you made because you guys came on and you whipped up something that was very macho. Is that okay to say? Go ahead. Yeah, it, it was a, a tofu scramble. And, and the reason we picked this is because tofu is demonized, you know, like when it comes to soy byproducts. So we decided to make something and show people that it's not, this isn't a food that shouldn't be demonized. Uh, it's something that's been debunked. There's too many studies out there that proves the opposite, but everyone wants to look at Instagram and I don't know, Google a bunch of nonsense. So like, that's why we made the meal. And if you see two big giant bodybuilders up there saying like, it's not, then I don't think a study really matters. It's like, yo, look, the proof's in the pudding. Like you have two males who's, who's professional bodybuilders that's just slamming tofu and these meals are like about 70 grams of protein. So we're debunking everything when it comes to like the like the effects of phytoestrogen and making men look weak and, and making them look feminine and stuff like that. We're debunking where people think that you can't get a lot of protein on a vegan diet. I mean, what what meal can you get 70 grams of protein in one serving? Like, that's that's a lot for a plant based uh, diet or plant based meal. That's that's more than more than before when I used to eat meat. You know, 
Right. And 75% at least of all soy is fed to farm animals. So yeah. soy is being consumed one way or another. I'm very happy to announce that Dana Chang's New Day New Chef is a finalist in the Taste Awards, which are basically the Oscars of the uh, food and fashion industry. And not in one category, in eight different categories. Best reality series, best green or organic program series or film, and also best new series, best health and fitness program, film or documentary, best filmed at home episode. Although, well, we had some home when we went to new support and feed where we followed Maggie Baird, Baird, Billie Eilish's mom and Phineas's mom as they distribute vegan food cooked in vegan restaurants to people who are hungry during the pandemic and best series pilot. So that's eight, eight nominations, and that goes to all of you, all of you. Simone Reyes, what was it like to be on the show? Because I know you brought your good friend. Somebody's crackling, so whoever it is, mute. Um, uh, I know you brought your good friend, Otep. Tell us what that was like. And unmute first. Unmute. Thank you, dear. Didn't know I was muted. There Sorry. you go. It was so much fun. I mean, first of all, you know, obviously just hanging out with your vegan friends is always going to be so much, so much fun. But I just love the fact that, you know, there's so many people that I know who just, they hear the word vegan cooking and they're just like, oh my God, it's so confusing. These recipes were so easy. I mean, like literally you turn on the show and you can whip it up. All you have to do is get the ingredients and a lot of them are already in your fridge or whatever. But it's like, that's what I loved about this show. It was like, veganism needs simple. You know, start off with these, these items that are like already probably in your kitchen and things that can be done in five minutes or 10 minutes. You know, that's why it was so fun. But having Otep there, I mean, she's a force. She's so much fun. And um, she has a very, very strong fan base that um, are very open to veganism, but they don't really know how to do it, you know? And so that's why it was so great to bring her along. And Jane Elizabeth, I believe, did you make the, the vegan chicken wings, the cauliflower chicken wings? Because that, you know, chickens are the most consumed animal by far. And uh, chicken wings are one of the most consumed items. Um, so if we could just get people on vegan chicken wings, that would solve a huge part of the problem. What was it like for you to be on? It was incredible, Jane, to be on the show. And the chicken walked away from my dish. That's what happened. So I made crispy buffalo cauliflower bites. These are vegan. They're delicious. They're gluten-free. I've had food allergies pretty much my whole life. Um, so being vegan, you know, I want to show people that, you know, you can actually eat delicious vegan whole plant-based foods and they, it can taste delicious. So a lot of people really, their holdup is flavor. And I wanted to show people that you don't have to worry about that. You can have all the flavor, what you're seasoning, what you're using to season the meat that you're eating are you're using plants anyway. So you may as well use plants to season your, your plants, right? And then the chicken can always walk away. The cow can always walk away. You don't have to harm any living beings in order to get all the, the great nutrition you need and in order to live a, a healthy, sustainable life. So, you know, that was really my, my goal there and to, to create something that was delicious and super healthy. So that's, you know, it was great to be on this show because I got to meet a ton of really great people and just being able to be a part of something so fantastic where we can show people how easy it is to go vegan. Because these recipes, they weren't those really difficult recipes. Sometimes people put things out there and they've got a two page blog about why they chose to do this recipe. And then you have to climb to some mountaintop in order to get an ingredient that's only available maybe one time every five years and you get overwhelmed before you even start. These recipes are so easy. Anybody can make these recipes. So it made veganism achievable and you know something that anybody can do. So no matter what you think or what your taste buds want, you can do it without causing harm to any other sentient beings. And we had a wide array of people. We had musicians, we had lawyers. And one of them is here, Carissa Krantz, who has the distinction of being vegan from birth. Vegan from birth former prosecutor, attorney, founder of B-Veg. And this was one of my, and you know, we've got a bunch of pictures of the show. You can put them up willy nilly because uh, we don't have to match every shot with every person because really we had hundreds of people involved. But one of my favorite funny moments in inside story of the show was that you're vegan for birth, Carissa. So 
you're she's not used to tasting anything that's animal products at all. So <laughs> we were making deviled eggs, vegan deviled eggs. Erin Riley Carrasco makes vegan deviled eggs, and we told you to taste it, and you were like, ah, because they're so much like eggs. It's like eating eggs. You kind of freaked out. It was almost like, no, you can't because there's no difference. Carissa, unmute yourself, darling. There you go. Yes, and you caught the moment live too where I wasn't really prepared for the aha moment because my mom's made me vegan tofu egg salad my whole life, but she didn't add that black sulfur to it that made it uh, taste eggy or the way that eggs smell to me. And it was it was quite funny to be on the set and to have all the taste testers there love it and were blown away by the flavor. And I was a little bit blown away and taken aback by it because I wasn't sure it was a flavor I really was prepared to taste. But I think that it was exciting to be part of the show and all these amazing people who have figured out how to come up with these dishes that really show that there's there's no sacrifice in flavor if you want to have these options and that you can make it in 10 minutes or it can be great for a party. And um, they're, they're really, it, it, I was actually really, it was good, but you caught that moment live where I was unprepared for something to taste different than the way my mom made vegan egg tofu salad, which did not have that eggy flavor. Um, but yeah, so the, the show is, it's, I've never been a chef. My mom was always the chef. So it was also fun to be a part of. I was more in the host aspect with you, Jane, on the show than the chef aspect, because I'm not one that I'm normally comfortable in the kitchen. And I think that I learned a lot being there because it really wasn't so hard to be in the kitchen and to conjure up these dishes in a short period of time. And I got to taste a whole lot of delicious food backstage. Um, and it really is a new day and we all need to become new chefs in this new day. Exactly. And you know, what was incredible was there was such a great fun happening in the green room because, yep. the, at, okay. So we're talking about new day, new chef, which is available on Amazon prime and it's free for prime members. By the way, it's also on public television stations around the country. And, uh, we didn't know how many public television stations around the United States would pick it up. 84% of the country's public television stations have picked it up. There is a list of, of showings that is 90 plus pages. So if you guys feel like sometimes you're not making a difference, I'm telling you, this is all over the place. I got a call from somebody in Iowa who saw it. I got a, some, a call from somebody in Santa Fe who saw it. And it's actually hitting middle America and towns that wouldn't necessarily get this kind of content. So, so important, especially now during the pandemic when the uh, uh, veg fests and others uh, are not uh, going, even though they will be back. I'm on the board of veg fest LA and we will be back. Um, but you can watch uh, new day, new chef and don't forget new day, new chef support and feed edition, which features Maggie Baird. Billie Eilish does a cameo as well as her brother Phineas. Um, that is where it's a great program where uh, money is collected, given to vegan restaurants. They make food and then they deliver to people who are literally hungry and struggling during this pandemic. We need to feed good food to people who are struggling. So um, huh, it was a breakthrough because let me just say this. And Simone, you're in the business, so you know about this. More than 20 years ago, I pitched the Food Network on a vegan cooking show. You know, a lot of people have tried to get vegan cooking shows out there. And so, you know, it's it really is hard. It's like getting a touchdown during the Super Bowl to get a vegan vegan content on uh, any kind of platform. Uh, take it away. It's true. Uh, unmute. You're all you're all muted until you unmute yourself. But it's a new system here we're doing. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Um. Yes, I mean, and on, on mainstream media, we still see that, right? Because so many of the advertising agencies are still, you know, animal users. However, um, ever since the incredible boom of social media, we've gotten the vegan message out. The younger generations are now, veganism is a, a, a word that is very mainstream, right? And at this point, the larger, you know, media conglomerates, they're Playing catch up. I mean, we just apparently had the first, um, you know, uh, commercial on the Super Bowl 
right, for a plant-based item. So at this point, we're making strides. And Amazon, you know, God bless, because now they're jumping into the future with this show. PBS as well, who's always been an incredible source of um, education. And that's all we're doing. We're trying to educate the public on how they can be healthier, how the earth can be more sustainable. It all just makes good sense. And everybody is jumping into the future with us, you know, and we might have started it back in, I would say, 80s is really when you started to hear the word vegan. But now we're, we've gone so far that it's part of our natural vocabulary. Absolutely. And by the way, Jane Unchained, uh, Elizabeth Alfano, uh, Jane Unchained contributor, just interviewed the former co-CEO of Whole Foods. And we just published an article about this. He said the vegan food trend is the biggest food trend he has ever seen in his lifetime, more than 50 years in the industry. And so things are happening, especially now during uh, the pandemic where people are very careful about their food and they also want to stay healthy. Ryan, I know you are training and you do all sorts of things to help people get into optimal shape. Do you see a transformation? And I believe you're in uh, Arizona, right? Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've been training uh, people vegan for the last 10 plus years. And I've always felt, um, not from an ethical standpoint, but from strictly a standpoint of results. Um, obviously, I do it for ethical reasons. But, you know, from the prescription of a plant-based diet, from a non-ethical standpoint, simply from results-based, I always have felt that a plant-based diet is superior to um, a standard American diet. Yeah. And my gosh, we just had Tom Brady win the Super Bowl again. Right. And, and, and people don't talk about the fact that he's plant based, but he is. Um, yeah, you so definitely. Uh, just to add on to that, you definitely see how uh, a gentleman at 43 years old is playing at a very, very high level, maybe considered one of the best, you know, to ever play the sport and doing it all plant based or um, from what I know, majority plant based vegan. Yeah, it's amazing. And Corinne, you also train. You're in Florida. Um, are you seeing a shift? I know I was in Miami, well, quite a few years ago, and there weren't a lot of vegan options. Has have that has that changed? Yeah, there's a, a tons of restaurants that's opened up. Um, you see tons of vegan items everywhere. And people are talking about it too, so uh, it, it's not something like a couple of years back, like even five, seven years back when it was during that time, it was when you talk about it, people weren't really interested, but when you bring it up now, um, people are very interested in, in the lifestyle, especially because of the pandemic and people want to improve their health. And I, I do want to say, and I probably would say this over and over again, I should say it hundreds of times, this was a team effort. We had so many people volunteering. The soundstage was near Hollywood, uh, in the Culver City area, and it was easy to miss the studio. So we had people with giant signs outside the studio in the hot weather here in LA, holding up a sign, park here. We had people doing parking. We had people running to get uh, meals for the crew, vegan meals, uh, because as everybody in Hollywood knows, you feed the crew is the most important thing to do during the breaks if you want to have anything going on. And so we had people... Um, uh, just uh, volunteer makeup artists, vegan makeup artists using cruelty-free makeup. Um, we had vegan hairdressers. We had um, just an amazing team of people who came together. Um, Jane, you were there. Um, did you get a sense of the camaraderie that happened? Because it was actually a lot of fun. Everybody was behind the scenes taking video of everything going on. It was really a, a bevy of activity. Yeah, I would say so. I mean... Everybody I met there, I mean, it's like you found your chosen family because, you know, you, all these people in the vegan movement, you know, we may disagree on some things, but when it comes to the animals, we all agree. You know, we're all in this together and we've all made this choice um, to, to be vegan. And even Carissa, you know, she was born vegan. She wouldn't have to stay vegan if she didn't want to, but she chooses to, to do that. So it was really great. We had some funny moments talking about getting food. Jane, I don't know if you remember, but you know, I flew in from Minneapolis the the night before the actual taping, and um, went to to your place and dropped off my food because I was staying at a hotel, didn't have 
um, any place to, to keep my, my food. And um, so you were gonna bring it. And I don't know if you remember this, but you yes, showed up without my food. Do you remember that? Yes, yes. <laughs> but, yes. but we all worked together, figured it out, got the food there. <laughs> And she was like, she was like, where's my food? And I was like, I was like, um, James, you know, where's my food? Yeah, James freaking out. I'm like figuring out if there's a grocery store close by, but luckily we, we got it all figured out. And um, and it worked well. And I have to say, Jane, one of my favorite moments is when you help me make the ranch dressing that I use silken tofu to make, because I think the recipe called for like a third of a teaspoon of salt. And there's this ramekin that had, I think, over two tablespoons of salt. And I said, oh, yeah, about a third of a teaspoon of that. And she just takes the whole ramekin. Jane took the whole ramekin and dumped it in. I'm laughing. I'm like, or that amount works. <laughs> we had, I think it was like 18 times the amount of salt that was supposed to go in there. It was still I kept saying there's no mistakes in a vegan kitchen, which <laughs> there aren't because nobody dies. Nobody. Right? Now, Chef Babette, um, you know, you cook every single day at your restaurant. I mean, you run a restaurant, which I'm always blown away because honestly, just making toast and coffee with my cashew milk is enough to wipe me out. How the heck do you do it? And um, do you see in Inglewood uh, a change? Uh, in fact, it's been said in numerous reports that African-American community is converting to veganism at a higher rate than the general population. Oh, unmute yourself, my dear. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so how do I unmute myself? You're, you're unmuted now. Okay, good. Well, yeah, um, I've heard that as well. And, and for myself, especially, I didn't start off um, being a chef. Um, Ron and I decided we were going to open this restaurant. He was to take care of the money and build it out and I was to do the food. And so that's the way it's been. But um, the community has really, really changed. And uh, we're still about the only <coughs> vegan restaurant in, in, in the area, but um, we have no problem selling people on vegan food anymore. There was a time that people would come in, look at the menu, don't see me turn around and walk out. And of course, you know, I'm sprinting after them. So I can, do you tackle I'm them? Give, I'm you tackle them, them and, and, and knock them to the ground and say, no, I'm just like, You're... come back in here, eat this taco <laughs> for free. And they would get the taco and wind up dining with us, buying a meal and becoming customers. So we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, we're pretty well known. Thanks to people like you, New Day, New Chef, and all of the other, you know, videos from Mercy for Animals, BuzzFeed. It's helped us out a lot. So, but it's getting to the point where, you know, mama getting tired. <laughs> no, I get up no I get you up don't. o'clock in the morning so I can work out before I go to work and I try to be to work between four and 4.30. So, you know, that's why I'm asleep by six. You were lucky you caught me last night. <laughs> oh, Mike. And and your muscles are like, I, I mean, look, no, wait, I'm you want to show. Want show. Can you go full screen? We have to go full because we have to. No, just no, 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 please, no, 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 please, no, please no, Maroon. Go and do it, do it, do it, do it. Look. Look at that. Look at what? that. What do you look at that. that. Stop. Oh, my God. <laughs> And then people say, where do you get your protein? Are you kidding me? I know, isn't it incredible? And I do a lot of I do a lot of juicing though. I do a lot of juicing, a lot of a lot of chlorophyll, E3 Live. That's my lick. I love E3 Live. So I, I get it in. And I don't, and you know what? I don't eat massive plates of food. That's too much bulk. I at 70 years old, I'm always targeting nutrients. So my meals have to be nutrient rich because I don't want a whole bunch of bulk. Now, um, you're just such an inspiration. And I'm, I'm serious. Um, we videotaped her doing a five minute plank without yeah, was, on, yeah. on the street outside her restaurant. And somebody who was much younger, sorry, that snarky vegan girl. <laughs> I love couldn't snarky. Keep it, couldn't keep it together. <sighs> um, Carissa, I want to get to you and ask you because you everybody here, the thing that I also wanted to show with New Day New Chef is that we're from all walks of life. We're from everywhere because they there's this stereotype that they want to create about vegans 
that is this extreme sort of somebody hanging upside down from a tree doesn't mean there's anything wrong with that, you know, um, with, uh, you know, meditating. And uh, it, it's just this sort of really exotic, fringy, um, like you have to live in Venice, California or in uh, uh, the hippest area of Brooklyn to be. Yes. And that's not true. And so, Carissa, you are in Palm Beach and you are a former prosecutor. Um, and, and by the way, Jane Elizabeth is a former human resources executive in the banking industry. Um, so we've got people. Yes, Simone Reyes is a former reality star, but I was in the news media. I mean, we're everything ev everywhere. We're all different people. Can you address that, Carissa? Mm -hmm. um, so like you said, I was born and raised vegan. And like Jane Elizabeth said, I made the choice to be vegan. Um, my parents divorced when I was about five years old and I had a choice at that time. So I was introduced to veganism by my mom. But when I started to have to go back and forth, I was exposed to what the rest of the world was doing. And I made a very conscious choice then. And what I learned is that I had no choice with my choice, but to exist among other people who were not following my choices. And so for me, I lived in my own world with my choice to eat my plants and vegetables, but I was very normal in every other aspect of my life. I was going to ballet class and going to gymnastics and pursuing my education and I did dance ballet professionally uh, as well. So I believe that anyone can be vegan and there is a stereotype. And as I met vegans in my life growing up, before you guys, before it was more mainstream, before New Day, New Chef, where there's a bunch of really cool vegans that you can know, I felt very much like, wow, there's a lot of vegans out there that can give veganism a bad rap. I don't I'm not, I am not like them. I'm not just out there. I'm, I'm normal in school and I, I'm me. So I don't think that you can stereotype someone based on maybe their choice to have a vegan or plant-based diet on how they will relate to the rest of the world. It's just that we all have this one cause and commonality in common that brings us together because it is a strong bond because it has something to do with a moral compass and a moral decision. But really you can be a vegan and be all walks of life. And it's not an extreme movement like it used to maybe be identified as. It is more of a trendy movement now that's not a trend and not going out of style, but is gaining rapid momentum. Um, and now, yes, there are vegans that are journalists, lawyers, movie stars, singers, actresses, weightlifters, chefs, doesn't matter who you are, what you are, um, anyone can be a vegan. And I think that's the importance of the show is it shows you that anyone can do this. You might be used to a certain cultural lifestyle or eating a certain dish on your plate and New Day New Chef shows you, you can still have that dish and still have that flavor and it can still fit into your cultural paradigm and you can walk any walk of life and you can choose this compassionate diet and lifestyle and you're not really trading on anything. It's just a new adventure in your kitchen. And look at, you know, we're so different. I know Ryan, you speak very eloquently. And the first time I heard you on a panel, I was just blown away. We were on a panel together in Phoenix where you talked about how you're a former hunter and that you woke up and uh, that that was your journey. And I think that's a really important thing to bring up because sometimes people think, well, that's, that's something I couldn't be. I'm from a different culture. No. It's, this is a universal waking up. We have cattle ranchers who have gone vegan. I'm on the board of the Rowdy Girl Sanctuary. There are two cattle ranchers who said, no, we love animals. We're not going to kill them anymore. So uh, can you address that, uh, Ryan? Uh, and uh, by the way, Varun, if you want to put some comments up, we got a lot of great comments from people. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, I think that is something uh, that I like to talk about in particular because it does have to deal with tradition and a lot of people um, want to play the tradition card. Uh, that's how I grew up. But I don't think because the way you grew up uh, necessarily means you should continue to live that lifestyle, especially when you look at it from a perspective of ethics. Um, and if you do really love animals and care about animals, then certainly keeping them off your plate is the number one best thing that you can do um, f for those animals. And 
for the animals outside of those, uh, you know, human humans are also animals. And I think oftentimes um, people forget that those big agriculture industries also are very harmful from humans um, from many different angles. Um, I want to say that what's really great about veganism is that we are, somebody had said, vegan family. And it's so true. Um, Carissa, I didn't know you from Adam and you came to do the show uh, and we became friends instantly. It was like, I felt like I knew you my whole life. And I have that experience all the time with vegans, wherever I meet them, whenever I meet them, it's like, oh, vegan family. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I think came out of the show was that we're a happy bunch. We're not a glum lot. Uh, look at this. I used to be a slaughterhouse inspector and now I'm vegan from the 40 year old vegan. How amazing. Um, so uh, to bring that to cooking, one of the things that Dotsie Bausch, the vegan Olympian mentioned was that uh, they're doing more and more studies that say your emotional well-being is affected by your serotonin levels, which are affected by your gut biome, which are affected by what you eat. So I think there's a connection to the fact that we're a happy bunch when we're not angry about injustice because we do get angry. But when we're not angry and marching and protesting, we are a happy bunch of people. And I think that came through the show because, wow, we were having a good time. Simone, uh, maybe I'll hit you with that. We are. I mean, we're very passionate, right? But um, I can see for myself that I always say there's, there's no people like animal people. Um, we are the ones that, you know, are on the way to a red carpet event and it's happened to me and on the way there in heels and, you know, makeup and people waiting, there's a pigeon, you know, in the gutter and you stop everything and you go and you save that pigeon, you do everything that you can. And then what you do, you mobilize, right? You go on social media, you call all of your vegan friends and everybody's there to help. And, um, and nobody ever judges any decisions when the uh, well-being of an animal is put into the mix. Yeah, and you know, as was said earlier, of course, we all have some disagreements about other things in our lives, but fundamentally, we are pushed forward by one um, mantra, you know, which is we want total animal liberation. And we will get that way through our food choices, through sharing food, through sharing recipes, through protesting, through um, out potato vegans, whatever we need to, do to get there, that is our main goal. And because we all share that goal, we have um, a family that will never be broken. Yeah, and there is a tremendous sense of camaraderie, which I think came through in the show, because when you're having a good time, it shows. And, you know, we were lucky to have Amy McChrystal, who's a really good producer, and having been in television for all, uh, four decades, and now it's over four decades. Um, I know that when you have a really good producer, you can relax and just have fun. And then the show's better because you're not like all stressed out. Um, and so we did have fun. Uh, I First of all, I want to thank the SAVE movement for providing this platform. Uh, Anita Krines is my hero. Uh, she is the ultimate organizer for uh, compassion. And um, I... Uh, I'm so thrilled to be able to go live with our incredible contributors. Jane Unchained has more than 70 volunteer contributors around the world, and we go live at all sorts of events um, safely during the pandemic or not at all, depending. And my dog wants to be involved. He has something to say. <laughs> so I bring him up. He just went blind, and he's just uh, be re acclimating. He's elderly, and uh, he's expressing himself a lot. So there you go. So I want to thank the Save Movement. Um, I I think that the work that that Anita and her amazing team around the world do is extraordinary. It's very difficult. It's very, it's it's hard. You're looking and bearing witness and showing love and compassion to people to animals who are going to their deaths. Nothing could be more difficult. Um, this is a lovely counterpoint to that, where we show the joy of the movement. Can, can you elaborate a little on that, Jane Elizabeth? Yeah, you know, there is so much joy in, you know, being able to do something. I know it's easy for people to feel like they can't do anything, like everything they do isn't quite enough. 
And what I like to tell people is that every choice you make makes a difference. So in every moment and every day, you have the ability to make a difference with what you choose to do, with you know how much compassion you use, how much kindness in each interaction with other people, with every choice you make and what you buy, because every dollar you spend is a vote for the type of world you want to create. So, and you know, it can be overwhelming because you think, gosh, there's no way I can ever save all the animals. And that feeling is something as animal lovers and animal rights activists that we feel, I think, almost daily. But what we can do is be one less person causing animals harm. And so understanding that and understanding that we do make a difference with every single choice we make, that's empowering. And then we can empower other people to do the exact same thing and make those choices every day that will make a difference and do make a difference. And so there is so much joy in being empowered to make a difference every single day in every choice we make. <laughs> Unmute yourself, sweetie. <laughs> I'm crying. Yeah, there we go. Um, I, I wanna give everybody a chance for some final thoughts um, on what their experience was like for New Day, New Chef. And I'd like to encourage everybody watch, watch it with a pre-vegan. Uh, watch it with a free vegan. Send the link. New Day, New Chef. You just Google New Day, New Chef. Support and feed. Um, New Day, New Chef. Uh, Amazon Prime. You watch it with a uh, with somebody who is that that needs the information as well. It's a fun show. It's super fun. Oh, this is an incredible um, team. A husband and wife team from Cafe Gratitude, and we've got Joanna Krupa, who's an amazing amazing actress and uh, um, just all around supermodel uh, who was part of the support and feed uh, uh, season. But, but just final thoughts on how we can all, I say every moment, every meal we take is an opportunity to share the message. Take, share this video out, share this video out. Uh, oh, my doggy is barking to your doggy from the UK. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Well, he's learning his way around. He went blind and now he has to navigate. And when he runs into something, he barks. So I'm uh, I'm I'm learning to communicate on a different level. And and again, astounded by the intelligence. He's mastered the apartment in a way that I couldn't master uh, if I was blind. But um, you know, every time we have a meal, we can take a photograph of it and put it on. Uh, untold number of social media platforms and say, this is a great vegan meal, a great alternative to, in this case, um, fish. We did vegan fish. And uh, <laughs> Anita Krein says, I love the way you all dance on the show when the blender's on. Yes, that that's a funny story. And, and perhaps we'll wrap with that. Um, what happened, Chef Babette, is that we were having a meeting and we said, well, you know, what are we going to do? The blender, so many vegan dishes involve the blender. And then we said, well, maybe we'll get a silent blender. And then we said, you know, but the silent blender isn't really silent. It's just quieter. And then um, I said, well, you know, sometimes when the blender is on, because I'm a total goofball, I'll do like a dance. I'll dance my way when I'm making my ice cream. And so we said, let's just dance. And that just took off. Everybody, the one thing people take away from it is the blender dance. And I encourage all of you at home when you use your blender to please dance. Take a video of it and put it on social media. Chef Babette. <laughs> I, agree. I agree. That show was so fun. And I'm going to tell you the reason that the vegan, uh, the, the vegan movement is catching on. It's because it's a movement of oneness. We, 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 we are lovers of life. It's not just animals. It's the whole. It's everything. We love life. And so that is, we are strength by numbers. And I just know that we're growing and getting better. And yeah, the blender dance is the licks, especially since I can't dance. Oh, you can. <laughs> no, I just do <laughs> um, Corinne, what are your thoughts uh, about how we can take this moment that we're all together and whatever we could say to empower people who are already vegan to become more active, go to the vigils, start a vigil in your city. If there isn't a vigil, if there is a vigil attended safely, safely, I, we have on our website, Jane Unchained, you know, safety first, don't take any risks. But um, for every individual, I think the way we're gonna hit the tipping point and convert to um, a vegan society, which means that 
the equation will flip. You go into a restaurant, it'll be mostly plant-based. Maybe the meat is a little outlier until it disappears entirely or replaced by lab meat. The way we're going to do that is for all, for people who aren't vegan to become mostly plant-based and then become vegan or do it all at once. And people who are vegan to become more active, uh, particularly on social media, but also in organizations like the Save Movement. So Corinne, tell us what your thoughts are on that as we leave. Uh, overall, I, I thought this show was great. And it's a, if you're a new vegan or someone that wants to transition more into a vegan lifestyle, it's definitely a great show to watch because you're getting information from different aspects. You know, you're getting it from chefs, actors, uh, athletes, and so on and so forth. And then once you become vegan and you slowly transition into it, I highly recommend to do some type of outreach. Like for me, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a big um, activist and like going in the streets and with signs because I, I was in the military for eight years and having that, like, I, I could do it, but if someone comes up in my face, like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how I'm going to handle it. <laughs> because. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do instead? So the <laughs> shifting the conversation quickly. <laughs> so. So that's why that's why I do that's why I do bodybuilding because it's it's a it's an individual sport, yeah, you know? and and I can use I can use my social media platform to show people like yo you can be like fit you can build muscle you know to really demolish that masculinity <laughs> image that we have you know what I'm saying like that it's so crazy it's so crazy I mean the most the biggest he man in the world is you know the winner of the super bowl tom brady he's plant-based the strongest yeah. man in germany is plant-based the film game changer shows that all of these athletes a good percentage of the tennessee titans are plant-based ryan nelson and corinne sutton are plant-based i mean we gotta let that go that is not to mention that heart disease you know erectile dysfunction is a precursor of heart disease yep. that's not and that's for eating that's too much cholesterol in large measures so i mean right there mm -hmm. I, I don't get it we've got to shatter that myth is it getting shattered is it getting shattered corinne yeah yeah slow, slowly it's getting shattered you know not fast enough because i, I feel that more animals are definitely dying at a faster rate and yeah. people are dying at a faster rate uh, versus transitioning more into a plant-based diet. And it is, it's sad because the solution is just swapping out the food. And yeah. everyone's so against the fence about that. It's just like, if you eat and eat your whole entire life, like how hard is it to just try something different? Like there's tons of these diets out there that has all consists of meat, but there's only one that has none of it. Why, why not just try it out? Try something that's exactly. completely different. Yes. You know? and, and obviously we're joking around. We are a, a, a movement of complete and utter nonviolence. No animal or human has ever been hurt as a result of <laughs> normal active, activism effort. And that's true. Um, so I would like to give uh, Carissa Kranz, the vegan from birth, former prosecutor, attorney, and founder of Be Veg. What, tell us about Be Veg for a second and tell us what... Uh, what you what you hope people take away uh, aside from watching New Day New Chef, but what they can take away to make them more effective in this movement. Mm -hmm. um, okay, sounds good. So, Be Veg is the first accredited vegan trademark and standard in the world, which means we have a technical standard that we've built and put into place that is represented with a global trademark, a certification mark, which works like the good housekeeping seal of approval for all things vegan. Um, across all industry sectors. So VVEG is that good housekeeping seal of approval that keeps the supply chains accountable. So when we're talking about that, we care about uh, every dollar we spend and what that means in our purchases, VVEG really is helping you make sure that the entire supply chain and all the processes and protocol and factory checks are in place to help save more animals. Because the reality is the final product you might think is vegan, but the supply chain to that final product was not vegan. So if you keep the supply chain accountable, you're saving more animals. Um, my takeaway point with the show, I would say is that it's really a fun way to become vegan and to explore the movement and that 
there's never a good time except for now to try something new. You really can't hold yourself accountable for what you may have done in the past or the way you used to live or the choices you used to make. And you can't really worry about the commitment to the future because it might be too overwhelming and you might feel like you can't do it. So I think what's important is making the choice right now in the now. So if it's buying that vegan dish or buying that uh, vegan product or eating that vegan meal at a restaurant, then you made the right choice right now. And that's less of a commitment that will be less scary. And if you take it one day at a time, um, eventually you might find that there is no other way for you. I can't tell you how many people reach out to me on Facebook after I do Jane, like the show on Jane Unchained Weekly or on New Day New Chef, and they want to be vegan and they're trying. So the consciousness has changed, it has shifted. It's not like when I grew up where people didn't want to be vegan and plant-based and judge it. People want, want to, and then they get mad at themselves when they fall off the bandwagon and they eat something and they, they have guilt that goes along with it. So I think the takeaway is, is watch the show, have fun in the kitchen, try these different dishes. Don't be so hard on yourself because you don't have to worry about a commitment beyond this present moment in trying something new and who knows, you might be like Ryan, who used to be a hunter, or Corinne, who's now completely plant-based um, and has muscles to you know, kill, or Chef Obed, who's 70, and I was on her show, and I think I was more entertained by her personality and her muscles almost more than the vegan pizza. So I think and that, that pizza was good. But I think what's really the takeaway is that you, know, you really can have it all and be vegan, and you don't need to be afraid of it. You shouldn't be afraid of it. All right, I think you're absolutely right. Final thoughts, Simone. I just want to say that I'm so happy that New Day New Chef is actually on Amazon. I think that Amazon's going to be around till the end of time after all of us are long gone. <laughs> and I feel like it's just such an incredible feeling to know that even when we're not here anymore, you know what I mean? Or, or when we're super old, where we can look back and have something that's still available for the world to see that said we were on the right side of history. Mm. And isn't that amazing? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jane Elizabeth, final thoughts? Well, this is such a fun show. And like everybody said, I mean, this is something anybody can do. I like what Chris has said about, you know, just choose to do something right now. And this is something that everybody can do, what Corinne said about different forms of activism. So for people who, are curious about being vegan, this show is great because you watch the show, be inspired, take your dishes that you know and love and substitute you know, death for life. So instead of eating animals, add plants instead. It's an easy swap. It tastes better. It feels better after you eat it. And you know, for, for vegans out there who want to be more active, every type of activism matters. So this is something, whether it is you know, taking pictures of animals who are in need, whether it is taking pictures of food, whether it's sharing your transformation story, posting videos of you being able to do these amazing workouts, completely powered by plants, whatever you do matters. It makes a difference. We are breaking stereotypes with every kind of activism. And now is the perfect time to show the world how much power there is in going vegan and being completely powered by plants. So this is something that every vegan can do and never, please, please never ever feel like it's not enough because what you're doing is enough. Can we always step up our game? Yes, absolutely. Um, what you do today does matter. So whatever it is you wanna post out there on social media, you're reaching more people than you think. You might get a certain number of likes or views, but more people see it than actually respond to it in that way because you are reaching people who maybe don't wanna give you a like or give you a follow, but they're seeing it anyway. So you are planting seeds with everything you do. You never know when those seeds are gonna grow into something beautiful. So keep planting because you don't plant today expecting today to reap what you, what you sow, right? You plant today, you nurture, and you watch it grow within you know, a certain amount of, of time. So this is something that you do today, not expecting results today. You're planting today, you're gonna reap the benefits you know, down the road and so will everybody else. So everything you're doing definitely makes a difference. And I would thank you. I was just about to ask Ryan Nelson to give us his final thoughts, but I think he's dropped and he's doing a push up right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think I got everybody. I wanna say personally that um, 
the goal of the show is to show that vegan cooking, vegan eating is not a sacrifice. It's adventure. It's fun. We are having a lot of fun. And when you cross over, you haven't made a sacrifice at all. It's a win-win. It's a win for the planet. It's a win for the animals. It's a win for your health. But also, it's just a heck of a lot of fun. Vegan food is a party. And uh, so check out New Day, New Chef. Share this video out. Um, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. All of you are my heroes. And uh, we'll see you next time because we're not done. We're just getting started. <laughs> Bye. And thank you to Varun. Great.